Now, hello, lads, and welcome to another Trigger the Reds. Where this week we're doing our combined eleven of the season so far. No, not a combined eleven. Our no, best Premier League eleven of the season so far. At one and each, then, and then combined. Yeah, we can do that. That makes it fun, doesn't it? Sandal, so, let's stick on topic. I've got a shiny ten pence piece here. Yeah. yeah. Gets this now. Basically, we'll flip a coin now, whatever it lands on, you call it. If you get it right, you do your team first. If you get it wrong, I'll do mine first, all right? Yep. Right, go on, call it. Tails. Spinning. Big spin that led. Ted's. I'm not even joking. Right. It's the end of the world, is it? Relax. It is. You've got it's first win forever, so you know what I mean. <sighs> Love a good glass of tar. Oh right shit! Then. Can you see my desktop? Yeah. Oh no, I can't. Yeah, I can now. There we go. Give it a mo. Um, and I'll move you out that way. So this is my team of the season so far. There me sub, so it's jumped ahead a bit too far there, but I'll get to them in a minute. Um, so yeah, Totty, we all love a bit of Totty, of course, team of the year. Um, so this is my team anyway, so I'll talk you through it. I'll keep it nice and uh, concise. Um, so I've gone for the Aston Villa goalkeeper who transferred in from Arsenal um, for about 13 million quid. He was playing first team for Arsenal last season. I think he played in the FA Cup final. If I'm not mistaken, it's Emmy Martinez. Uh, behind Edison, he's got the most clean sheets this season. Um, mm. He's had some really top performances. I'm not sure if he's in the Spanish squad or anything like that because uh, I do know they have got some good keepers, but... The form the guy has been in over the past, you know, couple of seasons, um, maybe you could push him. I don't know, but I've gone for him as a bit of a. Um, well, it shouldn't really be a right wing choice just based on the form of Villa and the amount of clean sheets that he's kept. But he wouldn't be everybody's choice, so I've I've gone for him in the sticks. Very nice. Um, pay, paying me to uh, to put in three Man United players, and I know you can you can see the image um, in front here now. But I, I said to you before, you, you said what position did you struggle with the most, and we both said right back. Um, yeah. Now, typically, right back would pick itself. It'd be Trent, wouldn't it? But we all know it's well documented on the channel how, how poor Trent's form's been. So. Um, he's obviously getting back to his best now, which is fantastic. And we want him at his best to all you fucking idiot fans out there that think that we don't. We want Trent at his best, but Steve's going to address that later on. So I've gone for Juan Basaka, uh, and the rationale behind it um, will we'll talk for itself when you look at me midfield attacking three and, and the strike force as well. So I think in the one-to-one, I don't think there's a better defender in Europe. I think the only person that can rival Juan Basaka for defender in a one-to-one situation Fabinho. is Fabinho. What? I'd, I said Fabinho, but I knew you'd say him. But Fabinho, he's the only one, and I mean in Europe, by the way, there's no what even Verge, when Verge's at his best, he's not as he's not as aggressive in the tackle as Juan Basaka or Fab. So I've went for Juan Basaka. He's shy going forward. We've said it before. He should be playing at centre half with Maguire or Lindelof or Bailly or whoever. But mm. I have gone for for Aaron Juan Basaka at right back. Um, centre back was tough again because you know it does pick itself. Typically, you look on a verge. I, I looked at Ruben Diaz and he was close. Like I mean, no spoiler alert, but he's not in mind. But that Ruben Diaz. Chuck. I was close to putting him in, like, but yeah. to be honest, I've not seen enough of him, and I just thought, well, it's a given, isn't it? He signed from for City for sixty mil, you know, the top of the league, so he's 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 too blatant, I thought, and I like a bit of obscurity. But well, if you look at who's next to him, that's pretty obscure, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, by the way, not that not that mine are that obscure or anything, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think I was reading. I'll start with Fafana. I think um, he was. A, I think he was thirty odd million quid. They signed him for. I'm not sure if that's with add-ons and all that business. But 
I've seen an article say it was 32 million and obviously Leicester, I, I feel like Leicester are like kind of everybody's second club because yeah. they're not going to win the league, they might get into Champions League, they play good stuff and they're not really threatening. Like in the big games against the big teams, I know they beat City this year, but this is a freak season, but they don't typically get the wins against the bigger sides. Uh, oh, by the yeah. bigger sides. I mean, it was in City. They're always close, but no cigar. Like, they'll push you, but they'll lose 2-1 or something. That's Brendan Rodgers' Liverpool, isn't it? They'll push you, but ultimately they won't get over the line. So, I went for Fafana. He's a good uh, football and centre-back. He's young, he's fast. Um, so, I put him in there. He was a small in height on that picture, or is he? No, he's 6'8". Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not really. I'm uh, not sure, sure how big he is, but... Next to him, obviously, as you've just said, I've, I've gone for Ruben Diaz. Um, and one of the main reasons I've gone for him, obviously City are where they are, as, as you've discussed, but like I watched him against United in the Cup and he was a colossus. And it was against, you know, the on-form United and Rashford and Fernandez and all that. And he was an absolute colossus. He, he was spectacular. And I've kept an eye on him since then, really. And I just think... Where they are in the league, how good he's been for them. Laporte's been in and out as pair, and City are flying, and City will win the league. Um, but he has looked really, really good. I seen some um, fuckboy on Instagram saying that he was comparing his stats to Virgil's of uh, the other season when Virg finished third, the Neo fourth in uh, the Ballon d'Or. That was me. <laughs> Go ahead. And um. He was comparing his stats and he said, but Diaz actually goes towards the man. He doesn't just run away from the man. Mm. I just thought, look, he tits. But, um, Needs to figure out what jockeying is then and what diving in is. You think jockeying's like... <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've put, I've put Diaz in and then, uh, you know, Luke Shaw, like, what, what a season. He's had, I had to pick him at left-back. Mm. I know Chilwell's had a good year and, you know, Chelsea up and down, hit and miss. Robbo, he was playing really good uh, up until maybe three, four weeks ago. He was my annual player of the season so far, wasn't he? Um, but Shaw's performances, obviously against Salah, were, were outrageous. But when I watch him for United now, he's everywhere. He's at the top, he's at the back, he's, he's linking up the play. And he looks really strong and powerful again, like he did at Southampton. He's I don't know if you've always been a fan of Shaw's, haven't you? Yeah, he's probably got one of the strongest mentalities, though, in the game. Like, all the stuff he endured under Mourinho, not getting picked. And Mourinho openly saying he's freezing him out. Yeah. He's not, you know, he's not, I don't like, he's not my sort of player. And then he broke his leg away in um, Feyenoord, was it? The Dutch side. One of them in the Champions League. But he's just took loads of criticism publicly as well that Mourinho said in the media, and he just openly said, no, I want to... A bit like Jordan Henderson. He was like, no, I want to stay at United. I'm not moving on. And he's made that position is. So it, it'll be interesting. Like, he's definitely England's number one at this moment in time, a fullback. Yeah, definitely. Um, fullback. Defensively, 100%. I think my, he's... My, my favourite left back, as you know, is Chilwell. I just like the way he moves with the ball. Always got his head up, but you'd have to fix Shaw ahead of him. On form, um, yeah, yeah, and also like there's a lot to be said about fullbacks these days and how far, how much the attack and the numbers going forward. But I feel like Shaw's job first and foremost in his mind is to defend. He's um, twenty. And he can bench one twenty pounds, um, so yeah, I've I've gone for sure. Uh, and then in defensive mid, obviously he hasn't played there all season, bar two or three games. Yeah, I've had to play up, uh, just because t- tactically how uh, my the three in front of him are and the two forwards, there's going to be a lot of a lot of exposure uh, getting in at the two centre halves. And I thought, I'm not playing him at centre-back because we, we know he's wasted in that position. He's brilliant, but he's better in the midfield. Um, so I wanted him in the side. I put him in. I think he's our player of the season so far. Put him in there in the anchor role and he'll enable um, you know, the other three in front of him to, to do what, what they need to do. Yeah. I don't think you really need to talk too much about Fabinho. He's the best at what he does in Europe again. Um you know, when you say Europe, you mean the world essentially, don't you? So 
if all this shit about um, uh, Firmino and Alisson going to Brazil comes to fruition, that'll be a massive blow for us. But with them being injured at the minute, obviously don't know what, what's going to happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's a puff fab in. And then you said before about did you look at statistics and um, there's a lot of statistics flying around about Bruno Fernandes. Most goals and most assists in you know since the time he's been in the Premier League for United and that and obviously we do call him a, pen, a penalty merchant and a set piece specialist but he is fundamentally a good player a player that you'd want to have in the team. Um, he's not at the top, so, though, is he, for that assist chart? Like there are a good few players ahead of him for assists this year. Oh, I mean, um, like collectively, the stat was contribution since arrival. So, goals and assists combined. I don't know, this was too, too, about two. I just so. mean, for all this hype, the fact he's won four Premier League players of the month, I thought he would have been at least pissing the assists category. Obviously, like you say, it's his fundamental play. You know, Luka Modric gets no assists. Neither does Cruz, but the like two of the best centre-mids in the world. But, and Thiago as well for us. Yeah, for all the hype that they give him um, for being such a match winner, I thought when I was looking at the table today, he would be out in front somewhere. But um, no, no, it's the man in front, isn't it? Leading assists. Well, that, that was the thing. So with uh, Fernandez, you know, I've said to him, I've labelled not to him personally, but I've labelled him like uh, you know, not a big game player. And then obviously he gets the winner against us. And the grams full of. I don't know what you mean a big game player, but yeah. anyway, he yeah. doesn't show up in, in the bigger games. So I have put him in. Um, I've gone for for Grealish on the left as well. I w- it was a toss up between Madison or Grealish for me. Yeah. Um, I'd have picked I was, Grealish. Yeah, well, I was thinking about the pair. And I've always preferred Grealish. I just think he's a better footballer. <clears throat> Madison might be better with, you know, technical gets parts of the game, like, um, you know, counter-pressing and actual striking of the ball and whatever, whatever else. But in terms of flair, I thought, like, he would complement um, Shaw moving forward well, cutting it onto his right. Even if he um, is better want... than... Even if Madison is better at him at that stuff, it's marginal anyway. No, it's very, very marginal. And obviously, Madison's got a rich vein of form at the minute, but for me, I, I just like... The way Grealish is, he's the most foul player. Um, I think he's been the most foul player in the championship the past two seasons and in the premiership by a mile this season. He's the most foul player, um, which shows that he's brave and he gets on the ball and he takes people on. So I wanted him in my side. Um, yeah. And then sure. I wanted to have Kane in, but I wanted him in the 10 where he's played this season for, for Spurs. Because as you just touched on, most assists... I've always labelled Kane as like a poacher and not a great footballer. And when he's dropped off for England, it, it's pissed me off no end. Mm. But to see him this season, and you've got to give credit to Mourinho. Playing in that position means he's running less, he's making less sprints, so he should get less injury, although he's just got injured. Um, and he's picking passes out that are just top-notch. And he's also contributed with 12 goals, hasn't he? And he's got, I don't know how many assists. I don't, I don't know if you checked it today, but he's top on the assists as well. So yeah, he he's is. probably, I, I haven't seen your team, and don't say, but he's probably in your team as well. But I, I wanted him in that role. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and then I was thinking about formations because I put Salah in before the game he had against West Ham because he was still top scorer. If I was to put anyone in based on pure statistics, it was Salah. Um, because general play, he hasn't. What's that? I said, what a player. In general play, you know, he hasn't been. Like he's not. What we discussed it the other night. Like what I know, what Salah is now, he's just a goal scorer. Yeah, you know, that's what he does. That's his bread and butter, and I've, that's sound. So he's in the team, top scorer in the prem. Two absolutely class goals the other night. It's, it's when it's when people were saying, "Oh, he's as good as Messi," and it was these forced comparisons, uh, which I understand from a Liverpool perspective. But if they all would have just said from the beginning, "This lad, he gets the ball and he just scores it all the time," I'd have been like, "Wow, fucking hell, what a player he is!" But mm. it's because he was getting like the 
the the pound for pound football comparisons. You know, they were raving about his technical ability, which, you know, it's not at the level as some of them players in that team, is it? No, no. But, no. but if if anyone's going to get the match winning goal, like it's Salah out of them all. Although you've got like Kane and Son in there, it's still Salah who's a touch above them for getting the match winning goal. It's the it's the desire, isn't it? More than yeah, yeah. goals, and I think that's what Mane hasn't got. Uh, like he hasn't got the desire. It, it's the greed. Like you know, you say he's not like Messi and technical ability and that. But the other night, the first goal was like Messi, and the second goal was like Suarez. If you remember yeah, Suarez was... against Newcastle when Enrique did that ball over the top. Mm. Um, no, it was I... a good touch. Like it's funny I... though because there was one before it which was like Suarez. And it did come over the shoulder at the back and it just hit his head and the goalkeeper scooped it up. And I was actually thinking, fucking hell, if that was Suarez, that had been a goal. And then he does actually go and score too. So yeah, yeah it was it was good. Um and then obviously I've I've gone for Son. Yeah. And a part of that is because Kane's in the team, but also I, I just I love him. I just fucking love Son. I think he's quite. Mm-hmm. He's the quickest player there, any out of them. Yeah, and he can he can get a goal from anywhere, like the one he scored against Burnley or Villa, whoever it was, that in the Claret, and he just ripped them off six players and yeah. just bombed through and scored. And he links up well with Son, and I just think with that team, you know, there's a big onus on on the midfield three. Mm. Grealish and Fernandez will work back, but you know, in the bulk, Fabinho is going to have to remain resolute in the midfield and. When when Shaw goes, I can't I can't move it, but if you can see the mouse cursor here, when Shaw goes up, that'll be a back three. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So one, you're not going anywhere, fella. You're just sitting there and that's it. So that was the team. I've got the near misses uh, just on the next Sorry, uh, it's gonna Man United a six nil up against Southampton. Jesus wept. I know. Adam Wambasaka scored. <laughs> That's the <laughs> that's a that's a result. Luke Shaw got two assists. Oh yeah, you twice in the sat. Um, yeah. So yet spenders there. No, none. Um, subs wise, I've gone for these um, these few as you can see. Mm. So as I say, Grealish was a toss up between him and Madison anyway, or uh, J Mads as he's affectionately known by himself. So I did. Um, I did really, I did really want him in and around the squad, so I've put him in there. And then I think um, I've gone for for Hammers, James, J, uh, J- Rod. I just for the all about him, you know. Well, I, he's had injuries and his form's been hot and cold. But it, you you were saying it to me the other day. You just forget like what what a classy little player he is, you know. That pass, that ball. I think, like the way we talk about Thiago, Everton probably feel like that with Rodriguez. Yeah. And people that don't watch them every single game will probably go, well, what's he do if he doesn't score or what have you? But it's that bit of stardust that he's got. So I want, he weren't good enough to make the lineup, in my opinion, but I wanted him in there. Um, I thought he was actually going to be too slow for the Premier League, but he's proved me wrong. Well, this is it. So he's a great signer for them. He got him on a free. You'd be on an extortionate contract, but yeah, I'm at, I, you know, um, yeah, you, he's in the he's on a bench. You players like that, though. I watched the thing the other day, and it was about the signing of Ronaldo and how Juve have made so much money on it. And he's another one with it with his social media profile, yeah, All the shirt sales that Everton would sell way more shirts now just just because of him, and they would have made the money back already on the on the transfer fee, like, yeah. That's it. And, you know, if the stadium was open, more people would have came to watch the game to see yeah. a problem like that. So, yeah, he gets on the bench. I've gone for Foden um, or PFOD, as you call him, yeah. um, just because I just think he's he's class. And um, you can see a bit of a theme with my like attacking players. You know, they're all like silky. They can all move with the ball. And I, I just think he, he's going from strength to strength um, in, in this Man City team in the future with like. Curtis Jones himself, you know, you've got some really bright English talent there. So he was getting on the bench. Um, and then I've gone for two more strikers. So the season, Ollie Watkins has had, you know, he put a hat to yeah. past us and he's just electric every time you see him. He looks like he's going to score a goal. Um, so looks like wanted... an intelligent player as well, an intelligent runner. 
Yeah. He's got 148, hasn't he? It's mad. Excellent positioning, has he? No. I oh. just joking. He might. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's, he's a smart player. And then Ings... 100 just... more points than yourself. <laughs> Ings has been in class, hasn't he, for um, Southampton since he's yeah. gone there. And you know, speaking of smart players, he's a very he's a very smart player, isn't he? So yes. that's, that's that's the team, that's the subs, that's the squad. Um dead attacking, as you say, but I just it's not based on like you know tactics and yeah, will yeah. win the game. It's just based on the players that deserve to be in it this year so far, in my opinion. So I like your logic. Yeah, I'll um I'll get yours up just while while yeah. um, you, you know, if you want to ask me any questions on man for your free. Um, I'll just put a disclaimer in. I, I was going to share screen mine, but um, screen share mine, but um, I'm having a bit of trouble with the, the new piece of kit, lads. So he's got to do it for me. The new so, Mach. <laughs> that's my team. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Like, that's my team, yeah. boss. No more comments on it. That's that. You've done about seven of them there. So. <laughs> but yeah, what can you do? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, yeah, Nick, Nick Pope's the best English goalkeeper, isn't he? By a mile. Um, you, like I looked at that Villa player, but I thought I, I've, I've, we've all been on Popey now for about three years since Tom Eaton left Burnley, and it's it's the games he has like. I said to him, who was it the other day? Someone on WhatsApp, anyway. It might have been the hoppo, actually, about um, our defenders. Not not too many people have been happy with the centre-backs we've signed, have they? Um, but all you've got to do as a Liverpool centre-back is, you know, maintain concentration for a small fraction of the game. Now, I made a comparison. Imagine being a Burnley centre-back. Where you've eight, you know, 70% of the game, you're under the caution. The amount of times we've played Burnley whenever I've watched in the last couple of years, and they are under the cosh, and it's fucking Pope that gets them a point or the win against us. That's just obvious. So obviously, as a Liverpool fan, we've I've seen a lot of them like that. And Burnley are always safe, aren't they? Secure in the league. As long as they keep him, they should stay up or have a good chance of staying up. So to me, I think that's more vital than what Edison does at Man City, things like that. You know, it'd be interesting to put Edison in a side like that, where Pope just flourishes in, and he's, he always makes, like, cat-like saves, doesn't he, a few times a game, so... So hard to beat as well, because he's so tall, so he, he fills the goal without even needing to dive. I mm. just don't understand how Pickford's ahead of him for England. No, if Pickford starts in that tournament, I'll eat my hat. Um, so <laughs> fucking yeah, and left back. I went for Robbo, and it was a toss up with Shaw. I was actually thinking about having Shaw as centre back because he's so good defensively, and you can't beat him one on one. A bit like AWB, but um, I went for Robbo because up until the start of January, he was my player of the season for Liverpool, and I think he was still having a better season than Shaw up until January. Now, he's still got five assists in the Premier League. Um, so he's still got a bit about him. When we played the derby in particular, it was him, Henderson and Thiago that run it that day. And if you're going to compare him to Trent, he, he's sort of going to gear above him again this year. So although my favourite left-back to look at is Chilwell, I, you know, I do think on his day, pound for pound, the best left-back in, in Europe is Robertson. It's too young to say it's um, the Bayern Munich kid, Alton Davis. Alfonso Davies. It's too early to say it's him just because of last year. Robertson's been doing it now for like three years and a bit, so he's still got enough in the tank where it's still, based on this season, a, toy, a coin toss between him and Shaw. The only thing that's dropped off is his crossing. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, he's still doing great at his defending and his linking up. Yeah, so I got I went for Robbo there just because you know better the devil you know sort of thing, and then next to him Fabinho, because pound for pound apart from Diaz, he probably still has been the, the best centre back this season. Um, my other alternative was to put Diaz at centre back and push Fabinho up exactly what you've done, but mm -hmm. I thought I'll do something different. 
I'll go with Fabinho. We all know how good he's been at centre back, but yeah, he is better in the middle. Next to him, Wan Bissaka. As we've said, now he's he's he might be on a par with Fabinho, just a bit lower. But how long have we been saying we transition him to centre back? For about eighteen months. This, yeah, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to just do that there. Put him right side at centre back. <laughs> Put him right side at centre back, and I'd love to see that in real life to see what would actually happen if he if he got a run at right side at centre back. And you know what would happen? People like Neville Carragher, Neville would be like, "It's been a masterstroke by Ollie." It was like, "No, Neville, we said this time ago on Triggered Reds, put Wan Bissaka centre back because he offers fuck all going forward." If anything, that, that's, that's the letdown with the United fullbacks and your team there. If anything is you. Your your midfield um, your team is very it's based on the midfield in it getting creative which still shouldn't be a problem for Grealish and Fernandez but I thought um, yeah he wouldn't do anything at right back for me there Wan Bissaka so put him there and I went with Mister Reliable Luke Ailing I don't know if you've seen much of him yeah well he was good in the Championship he's never been outstanding. And I watched that first game against us, and Manny did roast them a few times. But I don't know if it's because he's been training under Bielsa for like 18 months, two years. Um, I ate all them Bielsa hype things, by the way, but still. <laughs> I was like, he doesn't seem out of his depth. He's 29 as well. He's an Arsenal Academy graduate, so he must have had a bit about them back then. And... Yeah, I've seen a few glimpses of him in the championship. He's good on Pro Evo. Um, he's not got any assists this year, but he's English. He slots in there with Popey and Robbo and Wamba Saka. So, you know, the chemistry for that back four is going to be 99 on Ultimate Team. So, and what are the right backs? Is there really? Who did you go for? One. Yeah, so there you go. I wanted one at centre back, and there wasn't really any other right backs. The other alternative was Matty Cash at Aston Villa. But Leeds, I think, are still likely to hit another bit of form, maybe finish near the top. And Ailing's proved himself at Premier League level. He's the captain of Leeds as well, so he's a potential captain for this side. But I wanted um, Ricardo from Leicester, but he's been yeah. injured. Yeah, that's it. Well, again, like you say, if he if he was on form, we would have both gone for Trent. Yeah. But it's nice to go with someone different in it um, once in a while as well. Who's was drawing? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, he's gone a bit under the radar, aren't he, Kevin? This year, even though the Kevin think, Bruyne. Yeah, I think it's just another city year where they'll probably win the league, but. He's um, second on the assists table, only one behind Harry Kane. Every time he plays for City, although when he's injured, they don't miss him, but you still see how pivotal he is, if that makes sense. He didn't even make my squad, and I can't even tell you why. I just thought, like... You forget about him, don't you? No, like, it was just too easy a pick. Like, yeah. I, I wanted him in the 10, but I had to have Kane in the 10. Yeah. So I wanted Grealish, so it was a toss between Grealish and Bruyne. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, I, I looked at Grealish as well, but I didn't put him in. If if I was to put Grealish in, he would have gone in for Rashford on mine. But um, I put Kevin De Bruyne in just because he's still the best centre mid in the world. He's still had a boss season. And I think it's just the case of you get used to seeing high quality every year. Other players have an outstanding season. And they, they start to outshine the ones you've been doing it for years and years. Like, I think... Um, like David Silver. No? Yeah, but um, when Van Dijk didn't get Ballon d'Or, everyone was saying, oh, he should have got it. Well, yeah, he, he probably should have. But that year, Messi scored 50 goals again. OK, it's unfair to compare the two. But if that wasn't Messi's 10th year at doing it, and it was his second or first, it would be Messi hands down. It's only because Messi constantly delivers a fucking up here that mm. Van Dijk really had a shout, to be honest. Um, so Kevin De Bruyne yeah. is in that he's in that ilk, isn't he? Again, like Fernandez, um, he's the other one. Four Premier League players of the month this season. So again, he picks himself. 
Um, he's probably going to get player of the year, isn't he? Depending on how United finish. It depends on... Up there, yeah. It depends on the vote, but they're all up his ass. But you spoke enough about him anyway. He's a top quality player, so we all know what he's good. Decided he liked him. Like the media decided this one's a good player straight away, and they're they're trying to say Thiago isn't a good player at the minute, aren't they? But they decided as soon as he signed for United that he was a good player before he even kicked the ball. And you know, he is he is a good player. He really is a good player. But I don't. I, whenever I watch him, I'm never in awe. Um, oh no, because he's not. Like not... He doesn't run the game. He just yeah. pops. Oh, that's it. Yeah, he reminds me of a bit of a deeper Coutinho. Like, um, they played Everton away and he cut in and scored a jammy goal. You say it's jammy, you have a shot at Pickford. It's got half a chance on it. But he shot from like 30 yards out. It went in and I just thought that that was a bit of Coutinho-esque, the way, the way he drove into the space and got a shot off there. So, um, yeah, for me, he's a bit of a deeper Coutinho. The only problem with this midfield is um, it's no a bit older. It's a bit bare on the counter attack, and I was going to compensate that with, like I say, Diaz and Fabinho. I would have put Fabinho in over Fernandez. You know, I would have, I would have still dropped Fernandez. I wouldn't have dropped the Bruyne because I still think the Bruyne's had a better season than Fernandez. But here's something telling for you. Do you know who me deputy centre mid was going to be? Who? Henderson. Oh, there you go. I was going to put him in if I didn't put um, De Bruyne in. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm sat there thinking, you know, again, Henderson's not really like, obviously he doesn't get assists in that, but I just love the balance he gives to the 11. And he starts playing good at centre-back now against West Ham. Yeah, few, moments, really few moments when he didn't like track back on the free kick, but he's not a centre-back, but... It's just the calmness he gives you. And it's not a case of, oh, now I'm older. I realise what he does for the team. No, when he was shit and everyone was up his ass, he was fucking shit. So what? So that you can't go, oh, see, I told you he was good. Because he wasn't playing like this when he was shit. Back in 2016. Back in, like, he's good in 14, 15. And he had the run in 15, 16. But, um, sorry, he's good in 13, 14. He had the run in 14, 15. But... He was great in 93-94 as well. But... you got to admit, the majority of his career at us, it's not been that good. But the last two years, he has been outstanding. And again this year, he stepped up to the plate. No one it's he's a cog in the wheel, but now he's an integral cog in the yeah. wheel. And he loves a statistic, don't he? He loves this staff of centre-halves. No one's dribbled past you, and no one's dribbled past him in four games at centre half. Yeah, right. and he, loved, he loved that stuff for some reason, but I, I don't well, see how it matters. I also think he's the best midfielder for dropping into um, the centre backs. I think he's, although Fabinho is more natural, it's Henderson's the way you better on the ball, isn't yeah. he? he? As you say, when he drops into the six, when he's distributing to the full backs, it's with snap. Yeah. Whereas Fabinho's, Fabinho's got a good pass in him, but it's not with snap and, and purpose. And you notice that when Fabinho plays out from the back. One yeah. thing I'll say about Henderson playing at centre-back, though, I've noticed in the past two or three games, they're the only game he's played there, he's tried to pass through the lines because he's playing so deep and he's just got intercepted uh, two or three times in the game. But it's not a major and he has been brilliant. And yeah. him and that Phillips last game where uh, you, you couldn't fault him. Yeah. And then I've put Kane as a in the 10 slash attacker mid because th- I don't think there's a player that does what he does in the Premier League. That many assists and that many goals this year. You said about that many goals. I know you said about Grealish getting fouled, but Kane's the same, isn't he? I don't know what his n- foul numbers are, but I don't know. I think out of all out of this eleven. I genuinely think Kane's the most intelligent player, like his football and brain. And I, th- I never thought I'd say that, but it's the way he draws a foul in the free kicks he wins. And it's when he's him and Son, deadliest combo in the league this season. He dovetail very well, don't he? But you know, when you say like people are always saying, I'm not bashing for Mino here, by the way, but people are always saying, but look what he does for the team. 
Yeah. Well, look what Kane does for the team in the same in the same role. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, yeah. He plays the ten. I'm not asked when anyone says he plays the ten. He Kane play the nine. He plays the ten. Kane does what he does, but scores yeah. triple the amount of goals and triple the amount of assists. Kane's my favourite player of the year so far. Like, um, just personal preference. I just love what he. It's his passing range as well. Like, I wouldn't say the Bruins got a better. Well, he has got a better passing range, but he doesn't put Harry Kane to shame. So it's the fact he's a goal scorer yeah. and he can just whip a ball, you know, the other side of the pitch and then put someone in. The through balls are just on points and we all know what his finishing's like. It's similar to Rooney, isn't it? Um, when Rooney dropped off. Yeah. He's just tough the words out of my mouth. He is literally like Rooney. Probably not as good uh, technically as Rooney was in Rooney's prime, you know, with dribbling and taking people on, but um, very much in the same ilk as, as was. But more clinical, yeah. And um, I've gone for Salah on the right. Now, these three, front three, are going to sort of replicate our front three, but where Son's obviously going to get more goals. Um, the, the intelligent player out of them, which actually linked them up with Kane, would be Rashford. So, gone for Salah, just because of what he, he is, what he says on the tin. Yeah, whatever the phrase is, does what he says on the tin. He's just going to get goals any from any position, really, across the front three. So Salah yeah. speaks for himself. Rashford, seven assists this year. Um, might might be a bit more than that, but he's another one. Like if, if him and Kane are firing on all cylinders come this Euros, I don't think there'll be many oh, other man. two. Yeah, other two players as smart as them. Like it's Rashford's football brain as well positioning his pace to get past people and we've we've credited United quite a few times on this channel where when the firing in Martial and Greenwood although Greenwood's in and out um, probably getting a bit of the stale and treatments under Rodgers not ready to bed in yet for a full season but when when them three are firing on all cylinders and it's United having a route there's not many better in Europe than that trio but I just think Rashford compliments them all so, yeah, he can cut in on his right foot, get those knuckleball shots off. He's a free kick specialist every now and again. Um, Who's taking your free kicks there, though? Fernandez, Bruyne or Rashford? The Bruyne, like, but, you know, if it's like 45 yards out, then give it Rashford. I reckon he'd get it on target. Um, but oh, gone for Son up top, but the front three aren't dedicated as Liverpool's front three aren't. So you've got to imagine these, like, the running round, the cause and havoc, the little heads are bobbling everywhere, and the opposition just can't keep up with them. Um, Salah's top scorer in the league, any but I think the only player who could fit into our system in that front three at the minute is probably Son for Mane, and if it's something we've said for a good while that Son is such a club player. Now, yeah. If Klopp would have signed him from Leverkusen, can you imagine the leaps and bounds he would have brought him on? Like if I know he was, I know when Klopp came in, he was already at Tottenham, I think. But can you imagine we signed Son over Mane at the time or, or something like that? I'm happy with both, but it wouldn't be, um, you know, I wouldn't say Mane's miles better than Son, and I wouldn't say Son's better than Mane. Like if we if we just done a straight swap for them, I'd be equally as happy. I don't know about you. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because Manny's done such things for us and he's a different type of player in relation to how aggressive he is. And um, I do love Son, though. I mean, I, I've said it a few times and I, I'll get lambasted for it, but if you would have offered me a swap deal for Son and Salah like a year ago, I would have took it. Yeah, the only reason I say Manny is because of um, he's a right footer and he plays like free roller on the left, didn't he? Um... That's the only reason I didn't pick Salah there. But, yeah, I'd probably put me captain as a... Um, go for Kane, innit? I'll go for Kane. My favourite player out of the 11, why not? He'll drop back as well and just spread passes. But that mid three, Fernandez, Kane, De Bruyne, that'd be like fucking Xavi, Iniesta, and uh, <laughs> Busquets. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be that. That quick, but or that slick, but you're not you're not getting the ball, are you? Off that midfield, and if you go to my other image, when when we're on the attack, 
it would be the brain that drops back and then go on click it I didn't get the pictures on with it because I had to drag and drop this one Swift. Uh, two meg speed so yeah see that yeah when we're on the attack that's what the game plan would be now obviously you wouldn't have the brain as a holder but the fullbacks would come back as well you've got two of the best defensive defenders in Fabinho and, and, and Wamba Saka and then what I like about this type of eight the brain is what Henderson does for us it's just that splitting midfielder that's able to distribute the play. I would have thought Thiago would have done it more for us. I'm a bit disappointed he hasn't because you said you want to see Thiago further forward, but I'd love to see him in the six as well. A bit like well, he, has, he has played in the six and now he's playing further forward. Millie's really, been in the six the past two games. But I think you'd have, you'd have been able to tell. A bit like Verratti, I thought he would have been a bit more like that with him, um, quite you know slicker, faster passing and that. But there's a few similarities there, isn't there? Um, the way you've got Grealish, I've gone for Rashford in that position effectively. So if you break it down like that, it's it's who's going to play deeper. But you've gone for two strikers, haven't you? Where is? I'm just thinking there. Like who would you who would you take out and put in? And on the surface of it, you'd probably take out Ailing for sure and put AWB at right back and put Shaw left side at centre half. And other than that, I think that's the best team. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do another one at the end of the season. I mean, Emmy Martinez and Pope would be a good toss up this season, but um you know, it's it's telling that that neither of us. I'm going to stop uh, sharing, by the way. Yeah, go it, it's telling that neither of us went for like Allison and um, Edison and all that, isn't it? You know what I mean? We went for like more obscure goalkeepers. Yeah, well, that's it. So, but I like to do the obscure ones more anyway. I know I went for like De Bruyne and Robbo, but it's good to put like a curveball in there. Like even though Rashford's a dead obvious player, and so is Grealish, it's good to just throw them in. It'd be boring because you see Carragher and Neville do them and they're always like the obvious ones and they're dead similar. So who cares? A lot of them are probably statistic based based on people. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put up some um, images and that on Instagram and let people have their say. Um, yeah. if, if they'll ever be brave enough to comment <laughs> instead of just liking everything. Well, I, uh, I, I put a post on today saying... Um, it was Suarez Dalglish, and it said, name the best January or name the best transfer deadline deal of all time or whatever in the Premier League. And it people, loads of people just liked it. No one commented. And that's a fucking engaging post. So get commenting on everything, you gang of cunts. <laughs> fucking hell. I'm sure that I will. Um, <laughs> next week, you'll see like 10,000 comments. It'll just be your Joe. <laughs> Shout out to Joe. Um We'll be having some guests on over the next few weeks anyway. We were just talking about it before, but um we'll keep I reckon we just keep this this one to what it was and we'll we'll touch base after uh, we end the recording. Yeah. Yeah. Sound. Well, we'll hope you enjoy it. It'll be up. Steve's doing it this week. So uh probably be up in about two weeks' time, but hopefully it's uh you's enjoy. The good thing with this is it's not that time relevant, is it? Whereas if we were talking about a Liverpool a game, you've got to put it up and it's got to be on before Brighton. Then when it's on, it's time expired in a way because we've already played Brighton. Do you know what I mean? Certainly, I do. Yeah. So then, see you in a bit, lad. <laughs>